Hello Dirtfish Rally friends and welcome to the future of rallying. We're here to discuss the recent proposals put forward by the FIA both for 2025 and 2026 with me as always the esteemed Colin Clark and me David Evans. Me first. Oh no I think he got that well, right David Evans. I think first, he got that right. Everyone else. Were you not a little bit missed that he stole your whole it's, it's an honour. It's an absolute <laughs> honour. I'm very pleased. When we were in the States at the weekend covering the 100, 100 Acre Wood, wood. Uh, Brento was also using that BK, as an intro. Brent Brent and Kelly. Brent and Kelly. Yeah, he was also using it. So Second no, best it's it's, it's for world. everyone. I'm quite happy to share that with everyone. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we are here to share with all of you our takes on the recently proposed rules for the WRC. Key point, key word there, proposed. Proposed, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's, not a fully, it's not fully fleshed out rule mm. set. It's not a set of regulations. Andrew mm. Wheatley's been tasked with drafting those up. But in the meantime, it's, it's basically just a set of directives, a sort of vision for the future mm. of the WRC with quite a lot of things still undefined. A huge amount undefined. I think it, what the FIA has done is it's been quite sensible. It's laid out almost a sort of blueprint of... Probably more than a blueprint, really, because this is clearly the way that the FIA wants this to go. And in a nutshell, it is slower rally one cars, faster rally two cars. That, See, this, this is what caught me out, David. You know, we knew that they were going to come up with something a bit radical and a bit different. But we assumed it would either be the demise of rally one cars... Mm. Uh, or, or the promotion of rally the promotion two. Of rally two. Yeah. What they've done is they've set forward these proposals, which is a compromise between the two. Mm. And that, that's taken me quite some time to get my head around. You know, why go in that strange direction? Yeah. So just to explain for anyone who's not au fait with the details of this and why it is quite confusing, mm. is first of all, you have changes to the Rally 1 formula. First of all, as we probably all know by now, hybrid is gone. But actually, speaking proposed. Proposed. potentially proposed, proposed. Yeah. yes, the contract is still in place. There's yeah. still a contract with Compact Dynamics. It's a very good mm -hmm. point that will need uh, annulled or cancelled or dealt with before it's officially out. One of the other key things that some of the drivers mentioned is that the restrictor is getting smaller, and that will make the car slower even if they are lighter. And there's also a reduction in the amount of aerodynamics. For example, the rear wings will shrink, so there'll be less grip in theory. Potentially, for me, I'm a little bit in favour of that because it will make the cars a bit more mm. unstable. More entertaining More to watch. entertaining, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. But I'm not convinced of the need to, to decrease the restrictor size. And there's part of me that's not convinced about the, the need to get rid of hybrid. Uh, oh, for goodness sake, David. I, well, yeah. For goodness sake, you have been banging on about, you know, uh, the futility of hybrid. And yes, I have. Since it came in, the inequity I, of hybrid since it came in, and now you're saying, when it looks like there's, there's light at the All end right. of the tunnel, it's going, nah, I don't want it to go. All right, get it going. I, but I, I'm with I, you. I'm in some ways, I'm with you, David, because they are it is so exciting. Cars. It's exciting. But it's then, exciting but then are they too power. fast? Are they too quick? And for me, for sure, losing hybrid, smaller restrictor, makes them too slow. And particularly, I, I'm lost. So we've done, that's what Rally 1 is. Rally 2 potentially comes with a kit that gives you more aero, different exhaust, bigger restrictor, and potentially a paddle shift. Or, yeah. apparently, for five Five grand. Euros. That's just ridiculous. That's just not going to happen. The big question here for all of the manufacturers has to be Rally 2 cars potentially beating Rally 1 cars with a bit of running order on the Friday, which a Rally 2 driver would get because they're further down the start order. It could not easily happen, but it, it's certainly the potential. So? Do you not think they'll back-to-back -back test these cars and say, OK, look... No! You know, I think they have to, David. But, Colin, think, they, these rules are coming I, in in June. But I think, in some <laughs> ways, in some ways, they have like to August, do something September, to back-to-back -back test them. They have to get to either Ford or to Toyota or even to Hyundai and, and say, right, let's just test this and mock it up. And if it does appear that the cars are ridiculously close... They need to say, well, we'll just increase the restrictor on the rally one. No, because what month, remind me, what month we're in now? Yeah, but, uh, yeah okay, I understand that the time we're is short, April. but... but I, so we've got April, but what, May, uh, oh, so we've got two, two and a half months. No, no, that doesn't They're matter. Not, you mark the cars up, but a restrictor is literally, I mean, that's the cheapest, most simplest thing to change, right? 
How would you change your restrictions? I would just go and find someone from Toyota <laughs> with, a, with a screwdriver and say, open and that up fiddle for with me. with it. <laughs> That's Toyota in the olden days, by the way. Yes. No one at Toyota now. No. I, I feel um, like half of this is a moot point because it's, it's effectively being left to the free market, right? It's going to be optional whether anyone actually kit. builds this or not. The kit, exactly, yeah. to make the Rally 2 cars faster. But first of all, the point that Rally 1 manufacturers don't want to get beaten by Rally 2 cars. So mm. why would Toyota or Hyundai <laughs> or Ford offer a kit in the first place <laughs> to get <laughs> beaten? Yeah. So they were hypothetically out. Then you look at Skoda. Skoda, Skoda we know, Citroen. aren't ready to build a kit yet. They have concerns yeah. about it. They've stayed, we found that out through David Richards. Yeah. But I wouldn't... So wait I, a minute. Wait a minute. So you're suggesting that Toyota, M Sport and Hyundai will not make these kits? That's Why purely be, a suggestion. Yeah, that's a I suggestion. Think, I think it's it a, is a suggestion. It's a logic. I, I get it's, that there's yeah. a disincentive because they wouldn't want to. But then what do you say to your customer base who have got Rally 2 cars? Sorry, your car's going to be way slower than the competition. I think and they they're will. going to sell no Rally 2 cars. No. They'll sell them. You know, you, you, you'll buy your Rally 2 car. And, you know, if, if you... Because it's not about, yeah, okay, you might, you might have a specific program, you want to run the Rally 2 car and that's fine. But when you come to sell it, you know, the, the second hand value of a a car that doesn't have that option to be, to be upgraded. Having a kit fitted. Yeah. You it's know, not it, the same. It's, it's, it he doesn't think, will they care if that car is not eligible for WRC2? If it's in a different class, it's not yeah. competing against their rivals, so it yeah, won't matter it, anyway. I think it will. I think the manufacturers will. I can see your point completely that there's no incentive to empower your Rally 2 car to beat your Rally 1 car, but the market will demand that you build, you build that kit. Building the kit for 5,000 it's not going to happen. Oh. It's impossible. Quite frankly, it's impossible to, to do that. It's what does a rear wing cost? What does a rear wing cost on its own for a decent uh, even even if it's a simple rear wing? I think the trouble is simple. Cole, is that you know we're we're into kind of making these sweeping statements of just chuck a rear wing on it, just modify even the modification of a wing. And from what we saw from the FIA's social media. Um, Instagram post yesterday of the modification to Rally 2 car, it's going to be essentially a Rally 1 wing coming in. So it's not, potentially they can. They, they, thousands though. Well, exactly. You've only got 5,000 to play with. And, you know, we blithely talk about it's cheap just to get rid of hybrid. But, you know, the teams say, mm -hmm. you can, yeah, you can just take the hybrid off. You can remap the engine. You can take the battery out, take all the gubbins out. But then what about the rear differential? That yeah. has got basically the access for the for the extra drive yeah. that goes into the rear diff. You've got to then essentially can you just patch up a rear diff, or does that need redeveloping? These things, you know, it's very easy easy to blithely sit here and say just do this, 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 and this, and it's all good. Motorsport does not work like that, and this is in some ways where I'm surprised that you would never ever call David Richards naive, Robert Reed naive, but. There is an element that I think that they've just painted it. Yeah, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that because it is David Richards. It is Robert Reed, And I don't believe that they have just painted it. I, I think they must understand what they're doing. They absolutely yeah, must I, understand it's it. It's difficult in the extreme to find a way to build that kit for 5,000. Now, if it was the FAA yeah, saying, yeah. we will build this kit and we will set it to you for 5,000, that's another matter because the FAA can subsidize it. We've seen it in motorsport yeah. before. That is quite different because you're then giving a uniform kit to yeah. all of the, the, the Rally 2 manufacturers. That makes sense. Yeah. But that's not that's what's not happening. That's not the proposal, is it? That's no, not the, the proposal, proposal is yeah. go away and there's the regulate. There potentially, these are the regulations yeah. coming that your rear wing has to fit into that. Your paddle shift can be powered by this. Blah, blah, blah. Go make it. It's, it's not, not the way gonna the happen. market works. It's not. And the, manu know, it's the, the manufacturers themselves aren't going to subsidize that kit. I agree. It's, so, it's very strange. That is very odd. And there has to be something behind that. You know, I'm not into kind of conspiracies and all the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, I am. Okay, I am sometimes. There's an agenda there yeah. in, in saying that, and I don't quite understand what the agenda is. No, but, it's, there, but it will become clear. That's it, for sure. It's an odd one. You know, the whole. But for me, the whole thing is you talk about back to back in the cars. I'm sure they're probably they've designed a computer program to understand how that could work. Um, but in real time, there's really not time to develop a rally two kit to detune a Rally 1 car, put them back to back in the middle of a season that we're already running. You know, we've had a good break yeah. now in the last six weeks. Well, that would have been but, the time but, but, to do that. There isn't time, and yet we get to June. Just, David, it is simple. It is a simple no, 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 thing. No, no, because we get to June, and then they've got to say, well, tell us the regulations. Well, hang on a sec. We're still in the middle of our Rally 2 plus 
testing in our rally one minus yeah. no no rules june world motorsport council we need the rules yeah. and that is crucial yeah. that the faa has set its own timeline now yeah. you know there's been enough talk about this when this whole wrc working group started before christmas the key thing was to get decisions made early that's what we're missing. But, and, but We've got to then, June, then. and we don't know what's happening in 2025. You know, the, the, the we know what group, might happen. The Sorry. working group was put together, uh, and it was a little surprise to, to a lot of us the fact that David Richards was all of a sudden dictating the direction of the WRC. Yeah. In some ways, dictating, and, and that's maybe a strong and word. Causing but, some degree of consternation. Yeah. In the a, man, a man that it's fair to say has not been involved at the top level of the sport for a number of years, mm. you know, and it's not to say he's not taken an interest, I'm sure he has, and I'm sure he's well across all of the regulations. Of course he is. But what was the objective? What, what, was the, what were they tasked with doing? Remind us what, you know, we, we, we're, we're discussing now what they've put forward. What was it that prompted that? What was it that they were told it was, that their solutions would have to solve? It, it essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, it was Thierry Neville's, the conversation with Thierry back in Sardinia, when suddenly he said, rallying is very much in decline, promoter needs to do more, FIA needs to do more. So then we had the changes to the points system uh, and the working group was tasked with finding a way to essentially improve participation. Yeah, I think it's grid. naive to think we're gonna get more manufacturers, we're not. That, you know, until we get the new homologation cycle, which could be 26, 27, we don't know that yet. Um, but yeah, basically to bring in more participation. And the key driver here with the Rally 2 Plus car is to give your local hero a chance mm. of winning. Mm. So do we think then that the proposals that David Richards and Robert Reed have come up with, will they meet that objective? Yes. Okay, so, yes. so, what, so there's no argument about going no, I mean, in the it, right direction. And, it, and Well, it depends, you know, from one aspect, Yes, if you, if you were a private driver in, in where are we going next, uh, in Kenya, you would have more, okay, Kenya's not a great example because of the suspension, what have you, but say Croatia, your local Croatian driver, local national champion, put him in a rally two car, knows the roads, um, knows the terrain, the weather, everything exactly far better than the rally one driver, they're gonna have a chance. I don't know about tarmac to gravel or whatever. Chance of a podium or chance of a win? Chance of winning. Chance oh. mate, oh, okay, let's go. Sorry, mate. Let's go to let's go to to Italy to Sardinia, and let's look at say an Italian champion. Name a million time Italian champion, Mr. Paolo Andreucci. Andreucci. Even, you know, even, rewind, rewind a few years because he's not quite as quick as he once was. But put Andreucci in a, a Rally Two car, a Rally Two Plus car. Put him tenth or eleventh on the road. Potentially, he's going to take a chunk of time on on the first day. He could, then if you got a bit of weather in there, and mm. just, it would need a trailing wind, but it's possible. And that is going to incentivize, potentially, national heroes, local heroes, local drivers, to come back and take a shot at Rally One cars, and, which and are now slower. I agree. And I, and I think that's, I think that's, Really, really important. Something we've lost over the past decade, 10 but years. that's only one element of it. It's one, one small element, but it's... it's and, and that comes at a cost to numerous other... The manufacturers don't want this, so therefore we're now alienating the manufacturers. Sick. You know, what, 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 what... It is just ridiculous. We have to listen to the manufacturers, but it's quite ridiculous that these manufacturers feel even remotely threatened. They have the world's very best drivers. There's no question about that. They are driving Rally 1 cars week in, week out. You know, Andre Ucci or whoever, Hayden Pagman, New Zealand, is not going to get into a Rally 2 Plus car and beat them. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. But it's more likely. It, there's well, a, there's a no, better but chance For, of it for me, if, if we talk realistically, we're talking about, you know, drivers who are, yeah, they've, they've got a shot at it. They've got a shot at the podium. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is important, and that's enough, you know. Uh, we shouldn't be concerned about manufacturers jumping up and down, is my point. Because I don't understand where their concerns are coming from in that regard. No, you know? I, I, don't, I don't understand it. You I know, think it's naive, really to not, cars. naive not to consider that you know, the manufacturers are the backbone of, of the championship. Without the manufacturers, we've got a world championship, but do we have... But we can't, we can't be absolutely at their beck and call. It's no, we can't. It's like asking turkeys to vote for Christmas. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just won't happen. We can't, they'll do what is right for them. Number of one for them. And, yeah. and we're hearing a lot about Thierry Neuville. And Thierry Neuville has been 
misrepresented, shall we say. You yeah. know, uh, you know, the village basically said um, that if well, you know, I, these I changes say, go Alistair through... Spoke to him. Yes, yeah, he spoke to him. He's very true. Said. Well, effectively, the whole hullabaloo about whether he would retire or not was simply a misunderstanding about... He basically said, if there are no manufacturers left, I'm not going to be here. Because so well, they all throw the toys for? out the pram. And say, if they, if they throw the toys out the yeah. pram and say, we don't like these rule changes, so we're, we're off. off. We're off. That's Which it. Which is just ridiculous. And it won't so just be Neuville. It'll be other, it'll be other drivers. Of course it will. It'll be most of them. It'll be most of the current top line drivers who say, oh, well, there's no one to pay me money anymore. So I'm, I'm retiring. Okay, yeah, you're Gregor Munsters will stick around. But, you know, is Andreas Mikkelsen going to be at the top level again? Is, this, is it Pika Lappi? No, they'll all be gone. Because no one's paying them anymore. Well, will they actually throw the toys out of the pram in 2025? Maybe not that soon, but... Long term, it's still a concern. They still have to commit to building a new car and a new rules cycle. And as far as I'm aware, no one is hardly hard committed like the, to doing that. These guys are winning rallies. They're winning world championships. Of course they want the status quo. Of course they do. You know, Hyundai want the situation as it is right now, where they've got a very good chance of winning rallies, a very good chance of winning championships. They don't as want more manufacturers coming in. They don't want more manufacturers right. coming in. So they are, of course, going to be upset by they anything will, that... They, they will say, but do we, we need more manufacturers, it'd be great to have another couple of course I'll say that. But genuinely, they're pretty happy with where they're at right now because, yeah. you know, there's a high yeah. probability that they're going to come away with a win. I, I think we need to be very, very careful about particularly future regulations. I mean, these are interim regulations, you know, that go part way towards answering an enormous problem that faces rallying in the future. You know, where do we go? You know, yeah. Where do we go? No, where, no, 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 yes, David, yes, they are. No, Don't. no you're completely wrong. Go on in. Totally okay. wrong. And they go we, part way towards answering an issue. No, we it? have the solution already, but we just don't talk what about is the it. Solution? We talk about it, but the what championship the as a whole. Sustainable fuel, we've got it. That's all we need. No, you see, you are wrong there. You are no. completely wrong there. You are completely wrong there because manufacturers. Do not want to demonstrate a car with sustainable fuel that no one can buy. Well, of course they can buy it. No, they can't. Well, of course they can. Why can't you buy a Ford Puma? Because right now, that's the way, that, not the way they're going. They're going electric. Now, the sad fact... And uh, the, Ford the, is. The, okay. Toyota's not. Right. So my point here, my, this, and you're playing right into my hands about where I think... Hyundai's not. Well, though they are, potentially. They are. Them. Hyundai, the N brand, disappears in terms of the ice, the ice engine. My point here is that we need to be open to... We don't take a gamble. You know, we have to say, uh, you know, yeah, we embrace, we embrace all of the potential future technologies and we come up with a solution. Oh, this is you and Dakar. Equalisation of technology. Now, no, but David, part of what came out of the working group was yeah. the term equalisation of yeah. technology. And, and the potential to look forward to electric as a, as a solution. And it, for me, it's a, it's a very, very tricky solution. It's one that's very difficult to manage. It's one that's very difficult to write the regulations for, but not impossible. It's not Anything impossible, else but we I do think is a gamble. I, I can't. Anything else we do is a gamble. No, 100% Please, wrong. David. You've played right into my hands there. Sustainable fuel is, is, is not a gamble. Sure. We know. But hang on a sec. I would say sustainable fuel for the next homologation cycle starting 27 to i can't see us getting a set of regulations written for performance equalization in time for the next homologation cycle i just can't see it because well, it's two and a bit so years sustainable away. fuel you've got car manufacturers that will no longer be making ice engines all they make is electric engines and we are saying to them yeah you can come into our championship but you've but, got to work with this but, but they don't have it's which a, manufacturers it's relevant. are not which manufacturers are not going to have an inter, in they're not homologated the cars aren't there David the cars aren't there which, in the car, which manufacturers Hyundai will when are Ford going to get rid of their cars Ford's not a manufacturer in WRC oh yeah but this is the one that we could be we're, we're, it's not yeah I agree it's not right now but there, there so are Toyota manufacturers and Hyundai will have ice engines so we're going to go with two manufacturers for the next decade no for the next five years no yeah, make it a three-year homologation a cycle in the That's next one, and then have a, a new disaster. set of homologation, a, a, a new homologation cycle coming in thirty. That's a disaster. It's not a disaster. It How is. can it be a disaster, Cole? Because we've got sustainable fuel. We're having zero impact. But we've got so don't just stop at the fuel. Continue with lubricant. Oh, I, I Bring lubricant in. All, so all of the, the I lubricants agree with all are of these things. So if you want to keep producing your performance road cars with petrol, with diesel engines, great, great. But, you know, but I But know. can you genuinely see that in just over one year's time, the FAA can have written 
and I'm sure yeah. Andrew Wheatley, Vanilla Solberg. Oh, no, 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 they, they know it's an enormous job and they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. Can they write that set of re regulations? There's a set of regulations for Dakar. I am going this to reject myself at this point, <laughs> finally. I, I almost feel like I'm halfway in between on That's this one. Because they're, they're literally <laughs> That's your job. Yes. That's my job. But it's, I see both sides of, of what each of you are saying, right? On the one hand, I'm, I, I'm fascinated by it's the Alpine. Right. He doesn't understand I'm relevant. fascinated by the Alpine <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. The, the paradox of Alpine. Here is this, Stel sorry, not Stellantis, it's the Renault-Nissan Alliance. Still one of the big players. They have this brand where every car in the future is going to be purely EV. Yes, they have the A110 today, that will eventually be retired. And once that happens, it will be a full EV range. While simultaneously, their main sporting engagement will still be Formula One, which is only hybrid mm -hmm. with these quote unquote sustainable fuels. Why is that? Why would they have their primary marketing channel in sports competition not represent the powertrains they are selling. So no relevance between the road car. Yes, and, the and this is the problem that WRC faces. It has almost a mandatory. Uh, it it needs to be road yeah. relevant by design. Totally. It can't just yeah. pretend it's totally. not. It, and we are completely stuck. And this is the point that and this is. It's interesting the point that Andrew Wheatley made about the design of the 2026 car, the new. Rally one, which actually we haven't really touched on so far. I should probably point out that it will be slightly larger in size. Yeah. And one of the main things is he's basically told Xavier Mestalampino, the FIA technical director, we need like an empty void because we don't know what's going on here. We don't know if it's electric. We don't know if it's yeah. a hydrogen fuel cell. We don't know if it's internal combustion only. We don't know. Mm. And it just, it feels like we can just go back and forth, back and forth, but talking about the merits sure. of So each. why are we messing around? Why are we gambling? Yeah. Right, because gambling is attractive to two groups of people. One is the desperate, and the other is the, the one that's overburdened with riches. We are neither. We are neither desperate, nor are we overburdened with riches. So we do not have to take a gamble because but, we have a solution, and but, that is equalization but, of okay. technologies. Accepted. It, that I, I am fundamentally, I agree with that. That, I, but I just think it's 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 going to be very very difficult to make that in time of twenty six. But tell us, how would an EV work on a modern round of the world championship? Well, that's not that's not an issue. That's not, it's an issue for the manufacturers to come up with. And the but, only way, but David, once again, you know, we, we need to be the the sporting discipline that allows manufacturers to show their engineering brilliance, to show their engineering innovation. And they need to show us that they can make a performance car. I agree. They can I, do 300 I kilometers. I don't think they want to when it comes to electric and rally. Because well, if no. you imagine the R&D cost to develop a battery that can both del consistently deliver the power Alistair, required for rally nothing. one and distance. It is nothing compared to what they spend on marketing. It is nothing. But I, is, I'm simply oh, not but sure. But the ROI is not there. That's my point. It's yeah, about ROI. Exactly. They can, and, it, the, the idea that motorsport is about trickle down of technology from yeah. the high performance motorsport into the road car. What consumer wants a racing spec battery in their car? People who care about no, performance are still no, on the no, ice no, no, trail. No. It's still not about sound. showing a racing spec battery as such. It's showing a battery that actually has more capacity and you know, for road going cars, yeah, that's the trickle down. We're so far away from that, Carl, right now. So yeah. far and away. And I asked this question to David Richards. So the, the regulations have to allow your, your, your ice engines with petrol, it's with diesel. It's not just a gamble. It, I mean, that to me is, as I say, for me, it's the next homologation cycle where battery technology, you know, we're in a very much a decisive phase for the automobile kind of industry mm. right now, aren't we? Because mm. We've seen many, 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 or not many, we've seen some manufacturers effectively turning their backs on EV. Oh, total 180 degree use yeah. time. Yeah, so there's a reason yeah. for that. You know, yeah. they've done the millions and millions of pounds worth of investment and said, no, that's not the way forward. Mm. We can't ignore, if we're not going to ignore that. But for me, that's potentially indicative well, of the well, fact that we will not get that solution without bastardizing our sport completely. I, I, unfortunately, it's going to have to that. It, we're going to have to actually address the, but then, the issues so that are this out is there. A, that's the a great that segue into, into the, the, the other work of the working group that they're allowing us <coughs> excuse me, to change the way we have rallies. We're having some sprint rallies, mm -hmm. we're having some endurance rallies. Great, so your EV is ruled out of an endurance rally. They can't do that. So next year or two years, we could have 
I don't know, well, a 500 kilometres. Equalisation of technologies could mean a very simple rule. You have two cars. One for the morning, look, one for the... No, you laugh. Oh you, no, honestly, th this is where we're talking about. We need to make it open to everyone. And they are laughable ideas. Order now. But, and, and how is that going for Formula E, Colin? How is that gone? But how quickly did Formula E then move on? Yeah. How no, quickly? I'm sorry, Formula Three seasons. E. It, 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 Three completely seasons. Completely different. No, 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 no. But as, as a case study, as a case study, it's, it's, it's one that's worth considering. Uh, not as a, uh, you know, as a template, it's not worth considering. But as a case study, it is worth considering. It's, no. <laughs> no. no. My point but, is, my point is that there, there are ways. There are ways. Oh, yeah, any okay, issue you come are. up with, there are ways of addressing those issues. There are ways. I think. You know, I think people talk about hydrogen. How, how would you, how would you, where would you find the hydrogen? How would you find the hydrogen? Well, yeah, and how do you, you package know, it safely to go? You know, there are ways of doing in, it. into the middle of the woods. And so I think you gave them six cars. For me, Carl, I think, yeah, build six cars. That's a, that's a great plan. Um, I, I think it's a good time now to accept that yes. Performance equalization is great. And innovation is what this sport's been all about. You look back to 1981 with Group B, with, sorry, with what would have been Group 4, Audi Quattro, turbocharging, four-wheel drive. Great. It's tremendous. And we've been so far behind in, in the WRC. You know, there's been no innovation. Nope. We talk about innovation bringing hybrid in in 2022. And quite rightly, people in Toyota will say, well, we've had it in the hybrid since uh, 97 or something like that. You know, so... Yeah, we need innovation. It's a great moment for that. But I'm not sure it's I'm not sure we've essentially got the collateral, if you like, to actually take that gamble. And this is where the, the FAA sits, is they've got two and a half manufacturers here and they're risking them with whatever regulation decisions they make in, in the next coming months and years. It's for me it's quite a pivotal time for, I think it's for, totally. for, yeah. for WRC. Yeah. Um, and and as much as we've talked about the cars, the technical regulations, I think the potential for rallies is also something really interesting with, mm. from the working group that we saw, that there is now this potential to do essentially whatever you want. You know, you can have remote services, you can have longer mm. routes, you can have shorter routes. It's great, but we need to see now events taking up that challenge. We've got Sardinia with a, with a shorter route, but still, let's see some sort of revolution. Let's see, you know, Chris Meek, 10 years ago, banged on about endurance being EPA, a 36-hour format. You start Saturday morning, yeah, you finish Sunday afternoon, you go through the night. 36 hours, 300 keys. Why not? Yeah, oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we can't drive at night. Yeah, you can. Just yeah. crack on. I'm, I'm doing an event in Australia next month that's 500 keys in 48 hours. 80 kilometre stages yeah. at night included. Yeah. You know, and, it's, it's, and, and you know, that, that's, that's an event that's designed to give the participants, what they want. And in the same way, we should be, we should be looking with that with the manufacturers. You know, this, that's what we want as rally fans. We want a diversity. And, I can, I but, can, but is it what manufacturers want? I don't know. I, but this is the point. I can see in Munich, people we sat in WRC promoter office banging the table saying, where's the engagement with an 80 kilometer stage at night? There isn't. There yeah. isn't. You're right. Yeah. How, how do you package that 500k rally in Australia for the public? No, 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 for no, the no. Viewer, it, The point is viewer. that I was making there was that it's, it's you know, it's, it, Everything is possible in terms of the yeah. format of rallies. And, and you know, that rally is designed specifically to appeal to the people that take part in the rally, to give them value yeah. for money, to give them convenience, you know, in terms of their lifestyle and all the rest. And, and as a manufacturer, if you take that up a million levels to manufacture, you know, is that what they want? Is that what they want? But you know? I think every now and then we've got to chuck one of those in. But then equally, you could argue and say, well, we did chuck one in in Mexico. We did the 80K stage. Nothing happened, but Argentina. by by Mexico. by Mexico, the yeah. by Patrick Superville and yeah. Gilles Spitaliers, the the organisers, by their own admission, it was the wrong time. It was Sunday morning. It should have been Friday morning. Do the eighty yeah. k stage. Yeah. Then yeah. there'd have been nobody left at the end of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. That's something that we do need to applaud. We also need to applaud the fact that um, there's the promotion team coming within the FAA. Uh, we need more promotion within WRC promoter themselves, the company itself. There is an admission that, yes, we do need to promote the sport more. We do. Um, you know, we do as much as we can here at Dirtfish. But we have, without a shadow of a doubt, the best sport in the world. Unbelievable. The most know, sellable we, sport in the world. 100%. It's, 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 it, is, it is so sellable. It combines so many elements that people you know, base their lives around these days. Yeah. You know, there's, there's the travel, there's adventure, there's outdoor. Yeah. Oh, and there's the most fantastic motorsport in the world. Yeah. 
We were, we were in Missouri at the weekend. You know, neither you or I had been to that part of the world before. Ozark, we, Ozark country. We, st we stood in those stages with genuinely thousands of people yeah. and watched. They were yeah. absolutely blown away. And it was right through the field from yeah. Seminook and Pastrana and Barry McKenna in the top open class cars yeah. all the way down to the, the ropey old BMW M3s. That you signed. That, that I signed, that made great noise. And yeah. it just, they absolutely Loved performed. It. They entertained. That's what our sport can do. And mm. sorry, mate. Now, all of this talk about you know formats and lengths and so on makes me wonder how how much should we challenge what the DNA of rallying is? How far should we push the envelope? That's a great as part question. of these changes, I, I, you know, I, 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 I think we have to have, we have to have open minds, and we, we I think mm. you know rallying as we know it is not sustainable, and we need to come up with a mm. format that is sustainable. And if we're not prepared to accept that, well, it will slowly die. It will slowly yeah. die. So are so, we in so agreement that if we keep no, everything No, Alistair, easy quiet. Mm. I'm going to turn this around on <laughs> you. <laughs> and and we haven't heard enough from you. Mm. What do you think? How do we... Do we... Oh, you're, you're teeing me up to get slaughtered. No, no, no. The, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> by no, the hardcore rally fans. Genuinely but, not. You know, but you with, live without, your life in the sport. Yeah. Well, I, I sort of take it from a... Um, you know, I have a bit more of a, a social media mindset, right? Because mm. I also work on that aspect of it. And yes, the TV stuff is important. You know, I understand why the promoter packages the power stage the way it is. It's a 90-minute Sunday finale in the same way that you have a football match, right? I get that. Which is why sometimes I wonder if you do something as radical as build like a Gymkhana-type thing inside the stage. Yeah. Have, have, you know, take the, the idea of a spectator stage and put it on steroids, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, purely blue sky thinking, do you put scoring for style into certain parts Why of stage? Why not? No, I totally agree yeah. with this. And I'm 100% I'm with I'm, you on I'm this. I'm slightly concerned. That's the first time in, in four years of Spin the Rally Pod we've ever heard blue sky thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> but I, I agree. We, nothing is off we need the to table consider here. It. Correct. I, I'm not, you know, and, and it's, you know, one of the ideas I had was, you know, if, if we actually want to prove technology with battery life, with, with hybrids, then have sections where if you can get 20 kilometres on a road section on the battery, you get an extra half a point. If you Why can not? get 30 kilometres, you get an extra point. So, and it, it, it introduces strategy. Do we yeah. use the battery in the stage? Totally. Do we use them? And it shows, you know, just things that are different that mix it up, that but make, you remember years make the whole ago, thing more relevant. Years ago, this is a slightly irrelevant point, but in Sardinia, um, the organisers of Sardinia talked about installing a, uh, essentially a pit stop in the middle, middle of the stage, stage. a mid-stage pit stop. Yeah. So the crews come in and, then, and yeah. there would be maybe two or three members of the team there yeah. with a trolley jack or whatever. And why not? You know, just that sort of thing. Yeah. We need to innovate. We need to think yeah. outside of the box and we need to come up with some solutions. And we need to do it quickly yeah. because at the minute, you know, the sport, we, are, we don't have enough fans we need to generate some interest in this amazing sport. And it cannot be that difficult because go take a look. Go stand at the side of a road anywhere. We did it last weekend, not at a WRC level. People were blown away. Yeah, yeah. It's putting the sport as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a simple thing to say, but it's putting it back in front of the public. You yeah. Know, and making it more relevant to the public. And, you yeah. know, and we have a great opportunity for that. Yeah, simple look, at, look at the park simple exposés. Things. Friday, Saturday morning. I mean, with the best Something one we in the world, do. Salem and uh, Potosi, they are not big places. And, you know, they are oh. in the middle of nowhere. People came in their thousands just to stand next to a rally and, car. And, you know, and from, not from, and Le Mans has done that forever, yeah. hasn't it? Where they, they, or Spa, you know, where they come down the road and well, go into right. the... Right, Spa is the one I mean, Spa. Yeah, where they go into the town and they take yeah. over the centre of the town. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you know, you put forward those ideas and those who regulate, say, oh, we've got drivers, autograph signing sessions and things like that. That is not what we're, we're talking no. about here. You know, it's the whole field. Potosi was the whole field from yep. you know, the number one car to the number 99 car at the back. Yep. And the whole of the high street was packed with people. Drivers were available. It was fantastic. And Travis Kids Pastrana were literally walked through a sea of people. A sea of people. And yeah, you but, know, you're not going to get Oik Tanek, Thierry Neville, Sebastian Auger. They won't really want to be in the middle of all of the people, but our sport is about... need open minds, David. Our we sport need... is about... Sorry, Cole, but no, it's no, about yeah, yeah. being in My the fault. middle of the people. That's yeah, what we correct. are. Correct. It's taking it to the people, and, and we yep. have to have open minds, you know, and we have to learn from best practice in other sports. Yep. You know, that's something I've been banging on about for years, a convoys. 
Yeah. You know, one of the greatest things I've ever seen in sport was the Tour of Britain cycle race going past my front door. Wow. And it was just the, the, the whole build-up, the anticipation, the convoy of, of the, 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 uh, you know, the pre-Peloton cars yeah. and all the rest. It was incredible. I thought, why can't we do that with rally? Why do we, it, it why do we hide our rally cars away? 15, 20 minutes. It's, it's, you Come know, you put, you put, rolling roadblock. You put 10, 10 world road rally road cars road and 15, or rally one cars, and 15 rally two cars in a convoy and take it through the centre of town. Yeah. From, you know, from the service park to uh, holding zone before the first stage. Oh my God, what an impact that yeah. makes. Make Rather than noise. going Don't around the outside. Don't run in EV mode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best bit. When we were in Chile last Chile. year. Chile. I've and never it, seen it, anything like it in my life. All of the fans ready for the noise into EV mode. And they've been worked up into a frenzy yeah. by the two, what were the two yeah. boys called? The, the brothers that were from that area. The Hellers. The yeah. Heller brothers. They've been worked up into an absolute frenzy. Yeah. Literally, they were frothing at the mouth. And, and then you could Waiting for the, the car, waiting for the car. <laughs> yeah. Bang. Yeah. And it's like, how's that been allowed to happen? But again, that's an FIA regulation. But don't bother. Don't bother with EV mode because we've got sustainable fuel. We've got nothing to hide. Nothing We're not hides. harming the trees or the ozone layer. No. Nope. Nothing to hide. No. Nope. But nope. nobody is Celebrate the story. noise. Celebrate the noise. fuels and lubricant. That's the future. The Celebrate future. the noise. Celebrate the short term future at the rate. Should, should we talk about Safari now? We probably should. You know, that is this yeah. week. So here's my question for you, gentlemen. What are you most excited for for this edition of the Safari Rally? What's got your interest? The weather. Snorkels. Snorkels and the snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> snorkel, snorkel. Hand in hand, really. Oh my goodness, I've never been to a rally with a snorkel. Not, not a world championship rally. No. Never, you weren't when, working for... for no, I never, went, I never went to one in 2000, so 2002 Two. I started. Uh, and when was the last year, one? Yeah, yeah, well I never went to any rallies that had the snorkel. Yeah. Missed Kenya. But when the weather... Got, uh, uh, okay, we've seen the kind of long, medium, long term forecast and it's, it's looking pretty warm and pretty stable. But George Donaldson knows everything about the weather all over the world. George says anything could happen. Mm. And it can. You know, you get mm. these, we're almost into the rainy season. It can come and go in a very short window. And it can, we've seen it, you know, so many times. But there's a higher probability of the weather causing absolute chaos um, on, on this event. And for me, that's exciting. You know, what the teams want, what the drivers want, is they want to manage the prob not the probability, they want to manage the risk, don't they? They want to take away mm. any potential for any deciding factors coming yeah. into play. We want to chuck them in there. Absolutely. You know, yeah. chuck them in there. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm hoping for a downpour. You know, I remember yeah. I remember one of the stages, was it Naivasha stage in 22? Um, or was it Sleeping Warrior? Saturday afternoon. That, that so Robin Perra just went full scent and it was a yeah. mud bath. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was Thierry, that Thierry hit the tree? Yeah, that's exactly the one, one where Thierry nuts. skated nuts. off a bunch of times, his car had yeah. gone full of Mad Max, and then suddenly you're on an onboard and, oh look, there's a Hyundai in a tree. Yeah. How did that get there? No, yeah. it's just incredible because you're on just about every other event, you get a short, sharp shower and that's it. Short, sharp shower in yeah. Kenya has all sorts of consequences. Yeah. Um, so no, I'm, I'm it, looking forward to it. Again, a bit of experience in Missouri with a tornado that popped in. <laughs> tornado. <laughs> Honestly, there was a tornado that passed through. But the sky went green. Yeah, it? green. That means the hail's that coming. That means I never knew that. So I'd never seen it green. My geography sky. degree wasn't so wasted. He didn't know why I'd gone green. He's going, what's wrong with your I eyes, Colin? What's wrong with your eyes? I think I did remember <laughs> it. I'd just forgotten <laughs> so, that bit. So it went very dark, and then it went green. And then we started to see lightning flashing behind the green. It was, yeah. just, it was very dramatic. Beyond, beyond the weather, the fact that we've got a great race this year, 100% with Thierry, with Alvin, with Oik coming again. Robin Pair is a big question and, for me. And, yeah, where where, where does Calais slot in as yeah. well? But it's already you can feel a good season brewing and yeah. building. Yeah. Um, and there was a bit of needle in Sweden between Thierry and Alvin. It's good to try and continue that. It's, you know, those are kind of the storylines that we need to carry on. It, and also, you know, just actually the best news about Safari is it's happening next week because six weeks, FIA WRC long provides that far time. too long. You know, we cannot go six weeks without a, a WRC round. Yeah. We need our fix. I have been going stir crazy. Think, exactly. Well, you know, but this is another point. It's another point about promotion. And it's something that was talked about quite a while back. You know, what is the ideal spacing between events? Because there is absolutely no question that things have lost momentum in that six yeah. weeks. You know, yeah. and, and if we went 12, 
rounds a season. Is one a month enough? Well, no, it's not really. You've got to take a month, yeah, like, it's two months every, off every, there, a month there, and weeks. every three weeks. Yeah. But again, it's it's something that it's an easy win. Why why allow that situation to happen? You know, we're told yeah. there are dozens and dozens of countries standing by, ready to come yeah. to the championship. Well, yeah. that means you can dictate to the ones that are here already. And it means, potentially, Cole, that you say to the likes of Paraguay, to, to the likes of, of yeah. wherever, Canary Islands, fine, you want to come in, great. That's and our slot. Come, that's your slot, and yeah. you've got to pay the logistic yeah. fees. Yeah. For, you know, yeah. that's, and I think, you know, eventually we, we will have a product that mm. countries will invest that mm. substantial amount of cash so. into. But it is too long, because you're right, the fizz has gone. When we came out of Sweden Week, on the news desk, it was mad. There was so much going Present. on with Elvin, Thierry. Mm. You know, the whole thing. Did Thierry do it on purpose? Did he... It's gone. I'd forgotten it's about it. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that. When, yeah. when you were talking about the needle, I'm thinking, what's that? I'd totally forgotten about it. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting old. Granted. <laughs> and it does but, happen quite regularly, but, but yeah. But now we go we go into, into Safari, then we've got yeah. Croatia, Port yeah. so they come a little bit more rapid fire, but... For me, it is just, it's going to be Too epic. Long. And safari, it's safari. It's, mm. I'm not going because George Donaldson's going and I could never consider getting in the way of GD on the, on the safari. But watching from, from afar, watching on the news desk with you, it'll be amazing. And, you know, so much will happen. And there's so much history and so much rallying kind of relevance in that part of the world. You know, you look back and we've got some stuff um, to show you, some really exciting stuff to show you from... Um, from some archive footage going back to 73 and, you know, Sheka Meta winning mm. the, the, for the first time in, in 73. It's amazing. And those roads, those backdrops have never changed. But, you know, the li lions are a bit older. A little bit older. We don't see older. any lions. We don't see any lions. Do we see lions in that part of the world? I'm not sure we do. It's the odd mm. leopards. We no. saw, I saw... Why do we see lions? Man, that was too no, we don't see any elephants. Do we see lions? I'm not so, sure we do. Saw a few giraffes. All things Definitely considered, the zebras um, you need to watch out for. <laughs> yeah, as Elfin pointed out one time, yes. they are the sheep yeah, of yeah, Kenya, they and they will just stand there Absolutely. and not move. <laughs> but the, the big thing for me about Kenya is, is the colour and the fans. Yeah. And it's just such a different experience. Um, yeah. Your Kenyan rally fans are just so enthusiastic. There's so much colour. Uh, so much enthusiasm for dirtfish. For dirtfish. Oh. It's just incredible. It's just yeah. incredible. And, and that's, for me, what I look forward to every year going back to Kenya now. It's... You know, the competition's great, the, the, the weather element does make it exciting, but the fans make it special, make and it really, really special. A message for fans out there. Elliot, we've got, what is it, 10,000 stickers made? 10,000? 10, 10,000 10 stickers. 10 million stickers. Who's we've got two extra bags a huge of stickers? number of stickers coming your way, all dirtfish stickers. We are going to plaster in a very recyclable fashion. Um, dirtfish stickers, we'll plaster them all across Kenya. Magic. You, Elliot, George, that's your job. Can't wait. Give them out. No, it is, it's great. It's, there's always something very special about Safari. And in a way, it's Monty, for me, Monty, Finland, Safari, RAC, or Rally GB. Those are the ones yeah. that your year turned around. Yeah. And clearly, it's still got some magic to it when you look at the WRC2 entry list. It's getting yeah. bigger and yeah, bigger yeah, yeah, every yeah. year. And yeah, it's people making more of an effort, spending more money to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Uh, for me, the big thing to watch out for is Tanak this weekend. Tanak 100% yeah. needs a result. Yep. How will he respond? How will he respond? I really hope he does win. He's gone well yeah, in the past, hasn't he? And not had yeah. maybe the results he deserved. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, There's been... But, yeah. but it'll be interesting. Is, is this new Tanak that we're going to see, a Tanak that can deal with that pressure and bring it home? And, sorry. Yeah, he'll win or turn into Mr. Propshaft. Oh, I think hopefully we've seen the back of Mr. Propshaft. Um, but, you know, if Tanak wins, that brings more pressure to Toyota. You know, Toyota yeah. has won this event for the last three years and not just won it but they dominated it so a win for Hyundai would be huge yeah um and you know potentially a win for M Sport see you know Formo absolutely loves the Safari round rally it's one of is that realistic a win for M Sport Colin it's a Safari yes it is David <laughs> anything can happen yes exactly anything can happen so yeah it's it's yeah. great it's definitely one of the rally weeks that you just can't wait for it to get going I agree mm. I think with that, we've reached the end of the show. We have. We have. It's a good place to end. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll be back with you very soon with all the reaction from Safari Rally Kenya and beyond. See you all soon. See ya.